song books, please. Let's turn to page 114. Let's stand and sing together. 114. The great physician now is near, the sympathizing Jesus. He speaks the truth. Being hard to cheer, oh, hear the voice of Jesus. Sweetest note in Sarah's song, sweetest name on mortal tongue, sweetest carol ever sung, Jesus, blessed Jesus. Your many sins are all forgiven oh hear the nails of jesus go on your way in peace to heaven and wear a crown with jesus sweetest note in sarah's song sweetest name on mortal tongue sweetest carol ever sung Jesus, blessed Jesus. Verse 3. All glory to the dying Lamb. I now believe in Jesus. I love the blessed Savior's name. I love the name of Jesus. Sweetest song in Sarah's song. Jesus, blessed Jesus. And when to that bright world above we rise to be with Jesus, we'll sing around the throne of love his name, the name of Jesus. Sweetest note in Sarah's song, sweetest name in mortal. Sweetest carol ever sung, Jesus, blessed Jesus. Amen. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer at this time. Brother Jonathan Smith, would you come up, please, and lead our prayer? We are delighted you're here. It's good to be back in the house of the Lord this evening. Amen. Let's pray together. <coughs> Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity yes. you've given us to come to church yes. to worship you. Dear Lord, I thank you for giving us such a wonderful pastor yes. and a wonderful church to come to. Thank you for the folks that were saved and baptized today. And if there's yes. anybody here today that's not saved, I pray that you that you'd touch their hearts and they'd be saved today. Yes. I pray that you just be the pastor who passes, he preaches, and bless the first thing we ask you. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Jonathan. You may be seated. The choir is going to sing for us at this time. Latest sun is sinking fast. Here. 
hear the waves of Jordan's banks. again let's turn to page 20 stand and sing a good song when I see the blood I will pass over you number 20 let's stand and sing together Christ our Redeemer died on the cross died for the sinner paid all his due all who receive him need never fear yes he will pass will pass over you when i see the blood when i see the blood when i see the blood i will pass i will pass over you Chiefest of sinners, Jesus can say, as he has promised, so will he do. O oh, sinner, hear him trust in his word, then he will pass, will pass over you. See the blood. 
blood I will pass, I will pass over you Oh, what compassion, oh, boundless love Jesus hath power, Jesus is true All who believe are safe from the storm Oh, he will pass, will pass over you fellowship together. Shake hands with those around you if you would please as the ladies play and the choir comes down. to come. We'll receive the offering this evening. J.R., come on up here and pray for us, buddy. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for us today. Thank you for letting us have the food we partake of today. Keep us safe through the night, through tomorrow. Bless this offering to your will. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless us as we give this evening. If our children have some money they want to place in the mission offering this evening, they can do so at this time. They have a scripture verse or a song they want to sing, they can stay up here. We'll do that in just a moment. Let's play right
You did a good job. That's good. She didn't want me to help her. I love him better every day. I love him better every day. Close by is this I will. I will. A B I D. He. I love him better every day. I love him better every day. Amen. I love him better every day. I like him for so much. All right, let's give him a big hand tonight. Okay, do you want one of the deacons to do that? We have any volunteers right quick? One of the deacons? Jerry Webster, preacher, has called your name. He is on his way, preacher, Bible in hand. Brother Jerry, you better hurry. He said move it along tonight. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. That's it for the month. All right, Brother Jerry. <laughs> Preacher likes this. <laughs> Therefore, my beloved brethren, be you, be you there steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in works of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the works of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Thank you very much. That was a good job. For our special tonight, we have Raven Lawson. Did the kids go downstairs? No? Okay, let's go. Let's do that next then. The children can go downstairs to the class this evening. Thanks, preacher. The children can go downstairs to the class. And right now for our special Raven Lawson and Jessica Me coming to sing, Where Would You Be?
harper changed God's plans. The prophecies have been fulfilled. He's coming back again. Where would you be if Jesus come back five minutes ago? Would you still be here alone and lost without hope? He will return as a thief in the night. Will you be taken or left behind? Where would you be if Jesus come back five minutes ago? Take the word of God and turn to John chapter 21, verse 1. The Bible says, After these things Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and on this wise showed he himself. There were together Simon Peter, and Thomas called Didymus, and Nathanael of Cana in Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter saith unto them, I go a fishing. They say unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately, and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus saith unto them, Children, have ye any meat? They answered him, No. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. There cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved saith unto Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girt his fisher's coat unto him, for he was naked, and did cast himself into the sea. And the other disciple came in the little ship, for they were not far from the land, but as it were two hundred cubits, dragging the net with fishes. As soon then as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish lay thereon, and bread. Jesus saith unto them, Bring of the fish which ye have caught now. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of great fishes, an hundred and fifty and three. And for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Jesus saith unto them, Come and dine. And none of the disciples durst ask him, Who art thou? Knowing that it was the Lord. Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth them and fish likewise. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples after that he was risen from the dead. Verse 15, So when they had dined, Jesus saith unto Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, lovest thou me more than these? And he saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. He saith unto him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? And he saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus saith unto him, Feed my sheep. Let's stand together. Father, we love you. Thank you for the word of God. Thank you for your people. Help us tonight to honor you, I pray in Jesus' name. With thanksgiving. Amen. Be seated, please. <clears throat> We've just read in your hearing 17 verses from John chapter number 21 of an event that took place in the disciples' life, life after Christ was crucified, buried, and risen again. The disciples decided that since their Savior was dead and they were unbelievers in the sense that they did not believe he had resurrected. No, he had appeared to them two times. They were just having a hard time with life and they were thinking that everything the Savior had asked them to do, he didn't, he didn't mean it anymore. For instance, he'd asked them to become fishers of men, but they're not going to do that now. 
they've gone back to their old job and they became fishers again for fish. Look at verse number two, what Simon Peter said. Or, I'm sorry. Verse number three, Simon Peter said to them, I go a what? Fishing. I go a fishing. Well, you know what happened on the fishing trip? Uh, they fished all night and caught nothing. That sure is the bad ego on a fisherman. Amen? To have to come in and say, boy, I've caught nothing. I fished all night, toiled all night. And I haven't caught anything whatsoever. I could tell you some stories about that, but I won't. When the morning had come, though, Jesus, who had been watching over them in the night season, was on the seashore. And he speaks to them. But looking, if you look in verse number, number four, they didn't know it was the Lord Jesus. Let's see, see verse number four. He spoke to them. He didn't know it was the Lord. And his words are so tender. He could have said so many things to them. But you know what he said to them? He said, children, have you any meat? Here's what he said. If I give you the East Tennessee language, he said, catch anything? They've been fishing all night. And he said, have you, do you have any meat? They said, what did they say? No. Then as, they, as he had in their lifetime previously, he spoke to them and he said, I'll tell you where you can catch some fish. Look at verse number six. He said, cast down on the right side of the ship and ye shall what? Fine. And they were able to draw the net because of the fish was so great there for them. Look with me please in Luke chapter five. Luke chapter five. I want to show you something. Luke chapter five and I'll come to where we're going to talk about to you tonight. In Luke chapter five, I want you to see something. Look at verse number one. It says, And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake Gennesaret. He stood on the lake, and here's what happened. And he saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them, and they were washing their nets. They threw fishing, of course, and washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and it prayed to him that he would thrust out a little from the land. He sat down, and he taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said to Simon, Launch out into the deep, and let down your nets for a draught. And Simon answered, saying to him, Master, we have told all night and have taken, how much ahead of me they caught that night? So it's the same situation. They caught nothing on the night here in chapter 21. They had caught nothing in Luke chapter 5. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Listen to verse 6. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. And I want to tell you that that night, those disciples in John chapter 21 went out and caught nothing and the Savior spoke to them and told them where to fish and while they engulfed that great number of fish I won't tell you I believe their minds rushed back to this night rushed back they said oh it's the Lord matter of fact that's what John the Beloved said he said Peter said, it's the Lord you know what Peter did Peter said well if it's the Lord over on the shore that's where I want to be isn't that Peter impulsive and Peter jumps out of the boat and he swims a football field long and he gets to the boat because he wants to see Jesus Christ. He gets upon the shore, he gets off, and I see him shaking the water up of him, and Jesus said, come and eat. Here's something for you to eat, Peter. Now, have you ever wondered where Jesus got those fish? There was fish and bread on the fire, and he said, Peter, bring what you caught, mix it with what I've got, we're going to have breakfast on the beach this morning. And they ate the breakfast on the beach this morning. When after Jesus had prepared so much, he said to the rest of the people, said, come and dine, we're going to eat, we're going to eat together. Now, you've got to remember that this is one of the first times in Peter's encounter with Jesus after the resurrection, after his denial and rejection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Have you ever seen somebody on the street that maybe you didn't want to see? Have you ever seen people how ignore you sometime if they owe you money? Or someone that may be mad at you that maybe will turn their back if they think you're coming that way? So I'm not sure that Peter wasn't, wasn't as anxious as maybe we think he was of seeing the Lord because of previous things in his life. And there are several questions I think that Jesus could have, answered, could have asked Peter. Can I just tell you tonight, I want to tell you the questions that Jesus asked Peter. First of all, it's interesting. He said this to Peter. He didn't ask Peter about his past, did he? Did he do that? Did, did he say, Peter, what about your past? Did he say that? Peter, what about your past back there when you were an old dirty fisherman? What about that? He didn't ask him that. He said, Peter, what about all those times you've lost your temper? And Peter could, couldn't he? Man, he's always getting his, putting his foot in his mouth. What about that time, Peter, that you keep putting your foot in your mouth? <laughs> and I thought about this. What about the time, Peter, you didn't care your mother-in-law was sick? Peter was a good man. Come on. <laughs> he didn't ask about Peter's past. You know what he said to Peter? He said, lovest thou me? Didn't ask about his past, did he? He said, lovest thou me? The second thing, he didn't ask about his position, did he? He didn't say, Peter, uh, 
Did you know, Peter, or tell me about your position, because Peter was the inner circle. Peter, James, and John. Say it with me. Peter, James, and John. When you see the Bible listings of disciples and apostles, they'll say, Peter, James, and John. Peter's always first. He was always in the inner circle of things. He was always there. He didn't say, Peter, what about your position, did he? He didn't ask him one thing. And God walks in this room tonight, and I want to tell you, God's not impressed because I'm the preacher. God's not impressed because you're a deacon or you're a singer or you're in the choir or what you are. God wants to know one question tonight, lovest thou me? Amen? That's the sole, sole question. He asked Peter, said, Peter, do you love me? That's what I want to know. He didn't ask him about his past. He didn't ask him about his position. Thirdly, he didn't ask him about some promises he'd made. See, Peter made all kinds of promises, hadn't he? He made a promise one day when Jesus was walking down by the Sea of Galilee. He forsook his net. And he followed Jesus. Jesus didn't say, Peter, what about that promise you made me that day when you forsook your nets and followed me? He didn't ask him about that, did he? He didn't ask Peter. Also, when Peter was uh, that night at the table, and when Peter said to the Lord, Lord, though everybody else denies you, he said, Lord, I'll never deny you. Lord, I'll never, and I'll never deny you. He didn't ask him about that promise he made never to deny him. You know what? Jesus didn't remind Peter that night in the garden when he drew his sword against the whole battalions that was there and cut the ear of that servant off Malchus. He didn't ask him about that night. He didn't ask him about that. He said, Simon, lovest thou me? Now I know in this room tonight, because I know you're human beings, there's been times you've made some promises to God that you've not kept. I'd probably say everybody here, you made some promises to God that you just wasn't able to keep. I never will forget when I was a young teenager growing up. Uh, one night, and, and I tried to keep this promise. I never forget one night. I, I'd got some, my legs just hurt me so bad. I thought something terribly wrong with, was wrong with me physically. And I pleaded and begged with God just to let me be able to walk again. I said, Lord, if you will, I'll do my best to walk for you, live for you. And I won't tell you, as a teenager, I didn't do that. Regretfully, I didn't do that. I will never forget when I was about 19 years of age one day, we were out in the field and we were hunting and actually a hell storm came so hard that I had to lay down in the field and cover my head with anything I could because I thought it was literally going to beat me to death. And I remember, I said, oh God, I'll, I'll, do, I'll live for you. Let me live through this. I'll live for you. And I want to tell you, I didn't do like I should have done even after that. And I'm sad to say that, but here's the question. The question God isn't answered tonight about the promise you've made to him. God wants to know tonight, lovest thou me? Was that his question to him? Answer me. He didn't ask him about his past accomplishments, did he? He didn't ask him. He said, Peter said, uh, that night time that you were there and I asked you, who do you say that I am? You said, thou art the Christ and the living God. And I told you flesh and blood didn't tell you that. He didn't ask him about his past accomplishments, did he? He didn't ask him about being on the Mount of Transfiguration with him. And said, Peter, do you remember that? When we was up on the Mount of Transfiguration, I was transfigured. And there was Moses and Elijah and you and Peter, James and John. He didn't ask him about that. He didn't ask him, said, Peter, you remember that day? And Peter's the only one beside Jesus Christ ever walked on water. He didn't say, Peter, you remember you walked across water with me that day? He didn't ask him that, did he? He said, Simon, lovest thou me? And may I say to you, there's something else. He didn't ask him tonight about his failures. Huh? Peter cursed. Peter denied the Lord. Peter had gone back to his old profession. Jesus didn't come to him and say, Peter, about those things. He just asked him this question three times. He said, what did he ask you? Answer him, what did he ask you? What did he ask him? Lovest thou me? And that's the question that I'm asking you. Lovest thou me? Just a few minutes. We're going to take a little, little bitty cup, a little bitty plate. We're going to pass something around to you that was once a loaf of bread we've taken with our hands and we've broken it on purpose because Jesus said this is my body which was broken for you and when you take of this tonight and you place this in your lips and in your mouth you eat of it you're supposed to give respect and honor to the God of glory whose body was broken for you lovest thou me? That's the question tonight. In a few minutes, we'll reach underneath this table, and in this little covering here is a little bitty glass of grape juice. And that grape juice, when you look at it, when you take of it tonight, it represents the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, which was shed for you at Calvary. Don't think it ever keep you out of hell that I preached about this morning. It's what Jesus Christ did for you. 
And when you take of it, the question is, lovest thou me? That's the question. Not anything else. I'm not asking you about yesterday. I'm not asking you about last week. Not asking you about how you went visiting. I'm asking you tonight, right now, lovest thou me? Here's the question. There's more to that question. He said, lovest thou me? Tell me the rest of it. More than these. Picture the scene. Peter. Used to be a fisherman. He's back down where he used to fish. There's all the boats. All his fishing buddies. All the equipment. He said, Peter, look around. Look around. Do you love me more than you do that? Love me more than you do that boat? I'm not talking about just a boat you have. I'm not talking about that. Lovest thou me more than your prof old profession? That's the question. Teenagers, you love him more than you do your old friends trying to draw, drag you down? Hmm? Yeah. You love him more than those people on the job that's trying to, trying to get you to do things wrong? Hmm? That's the question. Lovest thou me more than these? Lovest thou me more than fame, more than sin, more than pleasure? Lovest thou me more than these? That's the question I want you to answer tonight as we observe, observe the Lord's Supper. Now, while our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. If you're here tonight and you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I'm going to invite you to take the Lord's Supper with us. If you're a member of this church or not, I don't think there's, we do not practice closed communion here. We think if you're a child of God, you can take the Lord's Supper with us. If you're saved, you make an honest effort to live for the Lord. I think you ought to examine yourself, ask yourself this question, do I love the Lord? Is there something in my life I need to get straightened up with God? You take care of it now in your heart, in your life. And I want to ask you just two or three questions. We'll give a brief invitation, then we'll let people serve you, and we'll have a Lord's Supper. Now, have me quickly raise your hand and say, Pastor, I'm grateful tonight. I know I'm saved by the grace of God. I know I'm saved. I'm not going to hell. Would you raise your hand? Raise your hand. Give me more testimony. You know Christ lives in your heart. All right, that's good. I'm glad you know that. Now, listen to me. If in this building tonight... You couldn't raise your hand. You know you're saved. I won't tell you that what we're talking about here, the broken body of Jesus Christ, the shed blood was given for you so you wouldn't have to go to hell. Jesus loves you. He paid a great price for you at Calvary. He wants to save you. And I promise you, if you'll come to him tonight, and if you'll ask him to forgive you your sins, and you'll believe the gospel that Jesus died for you and rose again, I promise you, he'll save you tonight. How many, there's four or five people a while ago that I saw didn't raise your hand. You, did, you couldn't raise your hand. You know for sure you're saved. Would you let me have the privilege of praying for you tonight? I'm not going to come and talk to you. I'm not going to embarrass you. But if you will raise your hand and say, Pastor, I'm not sure if I'd die to go to heaven. Would you pray for me? Would you put your hand where I could see it? Just let me pray for you. Could I do that? Pastor, I'm not sure if I'd die to go to heaven. Would you pray for me? Okay, you can put your hand down. I see it. Pastor, I couldn't raise my hand. I know I'm saved. Would you pray for me? I want to be sure. Would you pray for me? Would you pray for me? I'm not sure if I'd die to go to heaven. Would you pray for me? I'm talking about a God who loves you and cares for you. Would you let me be your friend? Let me pray for you. Would you let me do that quickly? Quickly, could I just pray for you? Quickly. Anyone else? Anyone else? All right, Father. You know every heart. You know every need. You deal with hearts like you need to. Put up our lives to please you and honor you in Jesus' name. Now, if you have a need here, you need to come and talk with God about something in your own heart and your life, I want you to come and do it. If you need to come uh, tonight and make public you've been saved, I want you to come. If you need to get saved right now, I want you to come. You hear me? If you were going to get baptized, instead of time to get baptized, you're not with this church family, I want you to come. They're going to play for us on the instruments. We're going to remain seated. If you want to, do this for me. Just say, if, if you want to go, I'll go with you. Someone just reach over to somebody and say, if you want to go, I'll go with you. You never know. You might be an encouragement to somebody. Somebody next to you. Somebody could be lost. The Spirit of God will let you say, if you want to go, I'll go with you. If you want to go, I'll go with you. While we're waiting, just a second. Waiting just a second. If you need to come and talk with God about something, you come. You come while we're waiting just a second. Help Brother Price. Help Brother Price. We're all Baptists. I'm glad the Lord loves us, aren't you? Lovest thou me? Lovest thou me? Lovest thou me? That's the question. Can you tell the Lord you love him tonight? Can you just look up to him and say, Lord, I love you. I love you. The Lord's wonderful, isn't he?
I need to come. You come on. We'll wait just a moment longer. Our deacons are going to come. You just keep playing, ladies, if you want to. The deacons are going to come and prepare the, prepare the table for us. They'll do that. Brother Terry. First, fellas. <clears throat> Come baptize me. Sit down there, man, let baptize. This is Kelly Webster. <coughs> Kelly got saved on Wednesday night, April the 5th, our J. Harold Smith meeting. I had the wonderful privilege of leading her to the Lord that night. Now she's going to follow the Lord in believers' baptism. Amen. Kelly, I baptize you in the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, buried with Christ in baptism, risen to walk in newness of life. God bless your heart. Amen. We're doing a lot tonight baptism, Lord's Supper services and everything and I know that uh, Kelly and her mother won't take the Lord's Supper with us they'll be out in just a second <clears throat> let's sing a little chorus <clears throat> I love him I love him because he first loved me and purchase my salvation on Calvary's. One more time. I love him. I love him. Because he first loved me. And purchase my salvation on Calvary's tree. Okay, men. You men come back. When we serve you this, which is symbolic of the broken body of Jesus Christ, if you'll hold it in your hand till everyone's just served, and we'll to give you instructions about when to partake of it, if you'll just hold it in your hand. As we're doing this, we give you an opportunity to brag on the Lord Jesus. He's a wonderful Savior, isn't he? And so we want you, if you want to, I'd like for several of you, if you would, please, just someone, just thank the Lord for his goodness and mercy and grace to us. You can start doing that right now, whoever would like to do so. Amen. Okay. Amen. Someone else tell the Lord you love him or thank him for something?
Amen. 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 Go sit down with your husband. So, I'm sorry. Amen. Amen. Thank you for building friends and salvation. This past week I had a phone call with that back there. God wants to keep hold of your gentle mind. Pray for that. Amen. 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 And amen. 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 Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation so full and free amen amen mm-hmm amen Amen. Amen. It sure is. Ain't God good to give us so many blessings undeserving? That's what we are. We ought to thank Him, love and praise Him. A little bit more today, a whole lot more tomorrow. Well, I'm almost right this time. I never sing that song twice the same way. Let's try it one more time. Though I'll follow you, follow me, or I'll follow you. But ain't God good to give you so many blessings undeserving? That's what we are. We ought to thank Him, love and praise Him. A little more today, a whole lot more tomorrow. That's close. God's good, Amen. He sure is. Yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> Jesse, Jim. Okay. Isn't it wonderful that tonight there's two ordinances of the church, the Lord's Supper, death, burial, resurrection, because we take it because he's coming again. Baptism, death, burial, resurrection. Isn't that wonderful? We get to do both of them one night. Amen.
Amen. These are good men up here. I'll tell you they are. Okay. That last night when the Lord was with his disciples before he went away and they crucified him, he said, This is my body which is broken for you. He said, when you take this, I want you to in remembrance of me. Let's have prayer. Father, thank you for the broken body, the Son of God, who was harmless, spotless, undefiled, separate from sinners, God in flesh, deity, wrapped in human flesh the veil torn in two so I could have access to the holy of holies glory to God what a savior Whew. wow thank you for the price in Jesus name amen let's eat of it You know, the Lord's Supper was also like a love, a love feast for the people because when they met together, it bonded them together. Because, see, they had faced enemies that tried to kill them. Their lives were much harder and rougher than ours were, are. And they expressed their love and appreciation for each other. It wasn't unusual for if they got in a crowd and one of them wanted to speak, that others would lay down and they could stand on them so they could be across the people to speak. Let's do this before we take this grape juice tonight. I want you to take three or four minutes. And I want the women to hug the women's necks. Amen? And the men hug the men's necks. If you are going to hug a woman, make sure you're married to her. Amen? Just stand up and tell somebody you love them and you appreciate them. Stand up and do that. God bless you, son. Bless your kids. Bless your man. Bless you, Pastor. Love you, Joe. Love you, buddy. Bless you, Roland. Don't leave. We're not through yet by any means. You can do it in a few minutes. Love you, Chester. Love you, Terry. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Love you, Lester. Love you. Love you, Roger. Love you, HB. Okay. Let me say something to you. I hate to think I lived my life without people that loved me and cared for me. Wouldn't you? I hate to think I lived my life without telling people I loved them and cared for them. Wouldn't it be an awful life to live if you had no one to share your love with? Wouldn't it be miserable? That's why every time we have an opportunity, we let each other know we love each other and appreciate each other. Tonight, we're going to serve to you that which is symbolic of the greatest price ever paid for us, which is the shed blood of the precious Son of God. For you not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold received by vain traditions from your fathers, but the precious blood of Jesus Christ as a lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. Take heed unto yourself and to the church which the Lord's made you overseers, which he's purchased with his own blood. Acts 20, 28. So this is God's blood that flowed through the veins of His Son that was shed for you and me. You hold it 
We'll take of it together as they serve you. Okay, man. Somebody want to tell the Lord? All of us ought to. But tell the Lord you want to thank Him for His blood that was shed for you. Amen. Amen. It's pure blood, purifying blood, powerful blood. Somebody else. Amen. Someone else. miss the opportunity in a public setting. Just tell the Lord you love him. I know you can do it in private, but just do it. Just tell the Lord you love him and thank you. Amen. Yes. Amen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He's a wonderful Savior. Somebody else, don't miss the chance. Amen. 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 Jerry's a blessing to us, isn't he? Seven teenagers, seven young people, college age and down. Seven of you, real quick. Just tell the Lord you love Him. Would you do that for me, for the Lord? Seven of you. One. Okay. All right. Mm. Mm. About three more. Amen. Someone else? Amen. Yes, sir. How about another one? Young person, Benny. <laughs> one more. <laughs> Just kidding. Amen. It's been a sweet day. Yes. Just sweet, unreal, hasn't it? Yes, Bobby.
We had four children saved in the bus program this morning. Isn't that good? That's good. Someone else now? Okay. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Someone else now? He has, hasn't he? Amen. Someone else. Before we take of this, I want you to look up here. Look at me just for a second. I want to say thank you. Let me be your pastor. You're a good group of people to pastor. Thank you for your attendance on a Sunday night when you could have been done something else and the sun hadn't gone down yet, but you came to church. I want to say thank you for that. And I give you a solemn promise tonight as I've tried to keep I'll do my best to feed you the Word of God every time you come. It may not be entertaining all the time, may not, but you'll get the Word of God. And that's exactly what you need. Amen? We'll do that. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Brother Whitby, thank the Lord for his shed blood for us. Night, Jesus, this is my blood which is shed for you for the remissions of sin. The Hebrew writer said, Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission. And if we walk in the light, as he's in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, actually says, keeps on cleansing us from sin. <laughs> Amen. So let's drink of it.
Mark, Martha, Kelly, Kevin, you want to come up here? Anybody else in the family wants to come with them? What she did tonight is very important in her life, getting baptized. Nick, you graduated from Furman, didn't you? I got a Bible for you. You weren't here this morning. Let me give you a Bible. Come up here. Anybody graduated from Furman, I want to shake her hand. I wasn't that smart to even spell it. I spell, spell it, much less go there. <laughs> I think that's good, don't you? That's good. Here you go. Y'all come right here. It's on the front row right here. Where's your family? Right there. Okay, the Bible says that night. God bless you, Nicholas. Appreciate you. Love you. God bless you. The Bible says that night that they sang a hymn and went out. If you want to know what they sang, you ought to go home and read Psalm 118. That's what they sang that night. In that verse, in that text is a verse that says this. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. That's the only time Jesus ever sang. He sang on his way to the cross. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down the right hand of the Father. Therefore, look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Here's what I want you to do. We're going to stand. They sang a song and went out. We're going to stand up and sing a song and shake hands with Kelly got baptized. We're going to sing one verse of victory in Jesus. How about that if you don't mind? One verse of victory in Jesus. Then come by and shake hands. Then you're dismissed. Okay? One verse of victory in Jesus. I heard an old, old story how a Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning. Yes, yes. Turn your card and if you need to, but shake hands. All right. God bless you. Thank you for coming. To be in uh, Chester Brooks and uh, Mr. Ware met here the other night and Scotty Wright and just checking out some things to make sure everything's all right. We'll let you. We'll keep you informed on that. We'll let you know what's going on quick as we know more about it. All right. So I want to tell you that with that because I haven't got a chance to speak to Joe. And Brother Joe also is going to quote our scripture verse, 1 Corinthians 15:58. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Pastor. You're welcome, sir. Do that first. First Corinthians fifteen fifty eight. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. First Corinthians fifteen fifty eight. Let's do it together, he says. Yeah. Once is not enough, right, Pastor? I've remember it twice. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Thank you. Could I have a motion, please, would be seated for our regular business meeting? Thank you, Brother Lester Kilgore. Could I have a second? Thank you, Brother Benny Walls. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Thank you. Mount Pisgah Baptist Church met for regular business on April 26, 2000. Brother Tommy Justice made a motion to be seated for the meeting. Brother Benny Walls seconded the motion. The minutes were read, and the motion was, was made to accept the report by Brother J. Ambrester and second by Brother C.S. Harvey and approved by the vote of the church. The financial report was read. Brother Lester Kilgore made a motion to accept the report and was seconded by Brother Benny Walls and approved by the vote of the church. There was one new item of business. The pastor and the deacon board made a recommendation 
to take on the ARC Singers for support of $35 a month as missionaries. A motion was made by Brother Leon Lowry and seconded by Brother Bradley Bonifacius and approved by the vote of the church. A motion to adjourn was made by Brother C.S. Harvey and a second by Brother Tommy Justice. The congregation was dis dismissed in prayer. Could I have a motion, please, to approve the reading of the minutes? Thank you. Brother Harvey, could I have a second? Thank you, Brother Brooks. I have a motion and second. Is there any discussion about the minutes? No discussion. All in favor, please say aye. aye. All opposed, likewise. Financial report for Mount Pisgah Baptist Church, April 2000. Mount Pisgah Baptist Church general fund balance brought forward was $57,878. Amount received in offerings was $78,344 for a total of $136,222. Total ministry expenses for the month were $81,227, leaving a mountain of and the balance of the general fund of $54,995. Mount Pisgah Baptist Church Bible Fund balance brought forward was $73,524. Amount received in offering was $15,792 for a total of $89,316. Ministry, ex ministry expenses for April of the Bible Fund were $27,763, leaving a balance in the Bible Fund of $61,553. Mount Pisgah Christian Academy, balance brought forward was $6,089. Total amount received for the month was $5,543 for a total of $11,632. Ministry expenses were $5,077, leaving a balance in the Mount Pisgah Christian Academy fund of $6,555. Mount Pisgah Baptist Church Mission Fund, balance brought forward was $21,647. Total amount received for Faith Promise was $8,682 for a total of $30,329. Total ministry expenses were $750, leaving a balance in the mission fund of $29,579. Mount Pisgah Daycare balance brought forward was $8,443. Total amount received for the month was $4,767 for a total of $13,211. Total expenses for the month were $12,028, leaving a balance in the daycare fund of $1,182. We have $2,181 in the Perpetual Care Cemetery Fund. Uh, Mount Pisgah Baptist Church Building Fund balance brought forward was $715,517. Total amount received for the month was $16,045 for a total in the building fund of $731,000. $563. I have copies. Would uh, encourage you to, to get a copy of it and take it home and look at it. If you have any questions, be sure and see uh, one of the deacons or, or Sister Karen. Uh, yeah, the mission support. We pay the mission support quarterly, so uh, you'll see it rise. And and and, and uh, Pastor said the checks were written today, so the mission fund goes up for three months, and then it bottoms out, and then it goes up for three months, and bottoms out. About $5,000 every three months, I believe, is what it is. So we pay our missionaries quarterly. Now, we're always a quarter in advance with them. We don't hold them in arrears for a quarter. We're always in advance with them. Uh, could I have a motion, please? We, pre we approve the reading of... Thank you, Brother Fred White. Could I get a second? Thank you, Brother Andrew Walls. I've got a motion and a second. Any discussion about the financial report? All in favor, please say aye. aye. All opposed? Thank you very much. Uh, I don't have any business. Uh, Pastor, I'll turn it back over to you. Shake hands with about five people and go home. <laughs>